Welcome to lesson two of the interior design playbook, expert lessons to streamline, scale, and succeed. I'm Meg, I'm an interior designer, and I am thrilled that you're here. Now, in our last lesson, we reviewed a full documentation set and explored the three core playbook strategies to speed up your drawing and documentation process. Starting today and over the next few lessons, we're gonna dive deeper into actually creating the sheets. And along the way, you'll learn how to optimize your workflow to save hours on each project. In this lesson, we'll start setting up your project's drawing set. We'll begin by importing the existing property floor plan and create an interior construction plan for renovation. You will learn how to import existing floor plans in DWG, DXF, PDF, or image format directly into Rayon perfectly to scale. You'll also learn how to organize your layers and sheets from the start to keep your process clear, consistent, and fast. And you'll learn how to convert them into accurate construction plans for interior room dividing and space planning. As always, I'll be using Rayon Design where I built the complete drawing set that we will recreate together in this course. Starting from a single imported floor plan all the way to furniture, lighting, ff &E, mood boards, and more. Stay tuned for the next lessons on how to create each of those sheets as well. Make sure you grab the free drawing template linked down below so you can follow along, customize it for your own projects, and start streamlining your setup right away. Let's get started. We are in our Rayon workspace and we are going to import a DWG of our existing drawing to scale. Then we will review the best way to organize your drawing to work efficiently, redesign the project, and add all of our documentation. So. Let's go ahead and import that file together. I'm just in my Rayon workspace. I'm gonna go ahead and hit import, and then we're gonna go find our DWG file, which is right here. I'm gonna hit open, and then it's gonna prompt me if I wanna rename it, which I do not, so I'm just gonna say import. First up, it's gonna ask us if we want to you know, double check the scale. So it's saying pick a known length by setting two points. So um, if there is a length that I know, I can just use some of the dimensions in here. I can just click two different points and tell it what that length is. Now it's telling me that that's 3.28 feet, so that looks right to me, so I'm just gonna say that's good. I don't need to rescale this drawing. Once the file does import, you're gonna find it over here under layers under your canvases. This is what we call a model canvas. So canvases, if you're not totally sure about what those are, they are the way that Rayon uses to organize uh, the drawing set. So we're gonna end up creating multiple model canvases for each drawing, so floor plan sections, spec sheets, um, et cetera, um, as seen in the final drawing set that I showed you. Um, and then we'll also have one paper canvas. So over here, if I say new canvas, you can see there's a model canvas or a paper canvas. So the paper canvas is where you basically showcase all of your um, drawing sheets. The model canvas that we have right now is called import. I'm gonna just right click it and rename it to, let's just say floor plan. Okay, so once we have it renamed, um, this is basically where we're gonna be tr retracing this file. Now, before we get started doing that, I do want to um, organize our layers a little bit before we uh, get you know too far into it. I am gonna start by selecting all of these layers that it brought in for the CAD file, and let's actually just create a new layer called CAD, and then we can just drag and drop these and like nest them in there. So make sure that you get all of them. Zero, we wanna keep out, but everything else can go into that CAD. Now it's just nice and organized. So if we wanna like hide them or lock them or whatever, uh, we can just you know select all of these little layers in here and say hide or lock. Um, let's just go ahead and lock them because uh, what that's gonna do is it's not gonna let me select any of those lines that it brought in, which is a positive because I just want to be able to snap to the lines. I don't wanna be able to move the lines. Let's also create a couple more layers while we're over here. Like for instance, let's do one for openings. Let's do one for walls. Let's do one for annotations. And then along the way, we'll probably end up adding some more like for furniture and lighting and stuff. But for now, this should do good for us for today. Now that we've got those, let's go ahead and start redesigning our project. So essentially we're going to start by uh, tracing all of this exterior work that we have here, and then we'll end up designing the interior. So for this particular project, uh, this is a summer ranch house and the clients asked for two master bedrooms, two children bedrooms, and a large main space for cooking, dining, and living. Now the exterior shell is uh, set in stone, so we're not gonna be modifying that. We do wanna trace it, but we're not gonna modify it. And then it's just up to us as designers to create an interior allocation of space. Now, one of Rayon's features that makes this design phase so quick is being able to use the walls and the zone 
tools that are parametric. So like when you make a change, they update with the change. So instead of just line work, like once I draw a wall enclosure on the canvas, I can actually move that and edit it flexibly. When I place a zone within it, I get an automatic tag with square footage. And then again, that will adjust as I make any movements on the walls. Um, or anything like that. And this helps a ton when you are dividing the space quickly with you know internal rooms and areas. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we are going to start by creating two different wall types. We wanna do an exterior wall type and an interior wall type. So to do that, let's go ahead and make sure that we are on our wall layer. And then we'll select our wall down here and we're just gonna draw two different walls off to the side here in our model space. So I'm just gonna draw one wall and then we're gonna draw another wall. So we're gonna use these two walls to create our styles. So over here under walls, you can see it's asking for the thickness. So I know that these walls are 12 inches thick, so one foot thick. Um, if you don't know the thickness, you can just grab your dimension tool and just click on either side. So you can see here that says one foot. So back up to this little tester wall, I'm gonna type in 12 inches on the thickness up here. And you can see that that thickened it up. We can also add like a hatch or a color or a texture to this uh, wall type. I'm gonna just do a color so it's easier when I am uh, you know, drawing this to explain, but just to kind of click through here, you can adjust with hatches, textures, and then you can also change the size. You can make it bigger, you can rotate, whatever you need to do. But just to keep it simple, we'll just do this blue one here. And then once you get this style the way that you want it, you can just hit plus save style and then we'll call it exterior wall. Um, make sure that all of these settings are right. And then we've got our first style. Next, we wanna do the same kind of thing, but make it an interior wall. So um, six inches is fine for our interior wall. Again, with the color or hatching or texture, um, I'm just gonna make this pink. Um, of course, you can choose whichever one you'd like. You can also change the opacity, and again, the rotation, the size, everything. Once we're happy with that, we'll just hit plus under save style and go to, or just type in interior wall here. And now you have these two walls set up as different styles in your file. And you can double check that by going over to styles right here and then scroll all the way down to walls and you can see our two walls that we have just created have populated here. Next up is tracing the space. So what I have here is all exterior walls. So what I wanna do is start by uh, drawing my walls. I'm gonna click the wall button down here I also want to actually make sure again that I am on my wall layer. So we're on the wall layer. So when I get into my walls, I can just click this little eyedropper now and I can eyedrop whichever style that I want to use. So I'm just going to eyedrop on the exterior and I'm going to start by clicking this edge here and essentially just start tracing this space. Now, if you, you know, make your wall too long or too short or, you know, you make it it's not like exactly traced. You can easily adjust that little mistake by just selecting the wall and just bringing it in. And you'll see that it like adjusts all of your uh, dimensions and stuff with it. So it's nice and clean. So the next step would be to essentially do this around the entire drawing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we will meet back up to discuss the next step. So now that we have all of our exterior walls traced, let's go ahead and just place an interior wall. And we'll just kind of zoom into this little space here to keep things nice and contained. But what I wanna do is I want to again, click on my wall tool and then I drop my style. So now we're going for the interior wall and we are just going to draw the wall the same way that we did before. You can also do something like this it just it's continuous which is really helpful and easily adjustable so like if I you know want to make it a little bit bigger you can also view the dimensions here um, which makes space planning just super super easy and then before we talk about how to add our zones I do want to show you how to add in some openings so that would be like windows or doors so just as an example here let's go make sure that we're on openings over here and then we'll click this opening button down here. And when we do that, it will bring up our library where we can just click or type in door and then like select door and then hit select. And what that will do is populate your cursor with the door. So it's recognizing that like these are all walls. So like you can snap to them. Uh, so I'm just gonna just snap here. And then you can also tell it which direction you want it to open, uh, all that kind of good stuff. So 
that makes it really easy. You can also easily move it if you need to. And again, those dimensions all update with it. Next to add in a window, if we go back to opening and then click our active block over here, that will open up our library again. And then we can just type in window, click on one of these windows. There's all kinds of options in here. They have so many pre-made blocks that just make it so easy. So you'll hit select and then that will again, populate your cursor and then you can just place it wherever again, you need it to like show which way it's opening. You can do that. And then I'm just going to hit escape. And if we need to make it bigger, uh, you can just stretch it out like that. And then the walls and the dimensions all update with it. So now once you have all of those openings in, we can start talking about zones. Zones are just a good way to identify different spaces within the space. So it will basically recognize any enclosed space, even if you have openings like a door or a window or something. So to place those, we're just gonna click this little zone button down here. And you can see when I hover over a space, it kind of shows me like, okay, that's the zone. So I just click to add the zone, go down here, click to add the zone. And it automatically tells me the square footage as well. And then, like I said, if you do adjust any of your walls, you can see how it's automatically updating those zone square footages with that. As with the walls, changing the properties and the styles, we can do the same thing with our zones. So if I just click on our zone here and go to our shapes, I can easily, again, change, uh, you know, the hatch pattern or the texture. If you click on this like pattern here, you can do some more realistic stuff. You can also adjust the size and the opacity. So, you know, maybe you want this to be three times the size, but you want it to be a little bit, you know, more muted because it's a floor plan. Um, so that's kind of where you can adjust that stuff. And again, if you like that style, you can just save that style and it will save into your file. You can also adjust the text color, the text font. You know, if I wanted it to be red and I wanted it to be, you know, my brand font, that's where you change that. And then similar to our picking the wall styles earlier, if you like this style, you can just select your other zone and then use your little picker and then it will apply that same style to whichever one you have chosen. Um, now you can still adjust the fill and all that kind of stuff, but it's nice that it can recognize the, you know, the color and the font and all that stuff that you've already done there. So, and then if you did happen to draw something on the wrong layer, like for instance, I'd you know, added these zones on the opening layer. I'm just gonna hold down shift and select them. And then over here, I'm gonna put them on my annotations layer um, just to keep things nice and organized. Now, if you do have a space that's divided into different zones, but it's not divided by actual walls, you can just use this little zone divider tool over here, which will basically like slice the room in half or in, you know, wherever you draw that zone divider. And then it will literally create another zone for you. So if I go down here to zone and then select on there, now I've got, you know, a whole new zone with its own square footage. I drop my style and then, um, you know, select a hatch if I want to. Let's just throw, yeah, let's throw that on there. Um, maybe make it a little bit uh, less opaque. And um, that's kind of what that starts looking like. Lastly, I do want to show you how to add in a dimension. Um, and I guess let's go ahead and hide all of our CAD stuff while we do that, because there's already a lot of other dimensions happening there. So I'm just selecting all of those and hiding those. And then right down here, we'll make sure that we're on our annotations layer. Annotations, make that the current layer. And then I'm just gonna grab this dimension tool right here and just basically select the two points that I wanna dimension and then drag that out. And again, with everything else in here, you can change the style, the text, the color, all that good stuff. And then if it's a style that you like, you would just hit save style and it will save it into your file. Now, obviously I have quite a bit of work to do with my floor plan here um, as far as like stylizing and um, populating. But once you do everything that we talked about today, your floor plan should then start looking something like closer to this floor plan where you know, we've got our hatched walls, we've got our openings, we've got our zones, we've got our dimensions just a lot more going on, a lot more space populated. So this is kind of what all of that work combined ends up looking like in the end.
Today, we took the first step in building your professional drawing set. We imported an existing floor plan, organized our layers and canvases for speed and clarity, and transformed that base file into a full construction plan. With this foundation in place, you'll find that a clean, well-structured setup saves hours of rework and makes every sheet that you create from here on out faster and easier. In our next lesson, we will build off this groundwork by creating the next two sheets in our set. Some of my favorites, furniture layouts and mood board finish plans that will really bring your design vision to life. If you haven't already, download the free drawing template Below, open it in rayon and follow along with one of your own projects. The more you practice the streamlined setup, the more second nature and speedy it becomes. If you found this lesson helpful at all, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any more lessons in the rest of the series. See you in lesson three.